Hello everyone, CapM here, and in this video I want to get into a deep dive of DraftKings, look at some financial metrics, and kind of see what insiders are doing right now, seeing that the DraftKings price has dropped immensely from its all-time highs around 55%. So you can imagine many people are fearful right now for DraftKings stock, but let's kind of look at a deeper dive, get into the technical analysis later, because we do know that markets are driven by technicals and fundamental analysis. So looking over here at this article, we see that DraftKings stock has slumped, but insiders did buy up shares. So we see that since DraftKings SPAC IPO last year, the stock has slumped this year, but three directors recently bought 2.6 million shares of the sports betting company. These are the first open market purchases of stock by insiders since DraftKings went public in early 2020 through that SPAC. So we're seeing that the company has faced headwinds as of late. A disappointing third quarter earnings report earlier this month did send these shares tumbling. And also near the end of October, DraftKings dropped a $22 billion bid for Entain, a deal that would have provided bricks and mortar betting sites in the UK and a foothold in online international gambling. So here's kind of some things going against DraftKings right now. But we see that the vice chairman Henry Sloan did buy $2 million worth of shares where we do see the purchase over here on the SEC's website 50,000 shares at a purchase price of around $39 and the stock has slumped since that purchase but Sloan says that he is confident in DraftKings growth trajectory and leading position in the US gaming market he remains excited in the long-term opportunity DraftKings presents and CEO Jason Robbins and his management team's ability to deliver on their compelling vision for the company's future so that's his reason for staying and buying now we also see that director Stephen Murray did pay 366,000 for 10,000 DraftKings shares at a purchase price of $36.66 and we also see that transaction here on the SEC's website validating it as well and he said that DraftKings has tremendous long-term growth potential the company's leadership is focused on maintaining a leading position in the U.S. gaming market while simultaneously exploring potential opportunities to expand into new verticals like that deal with Entain that did fail last month. And director Woody Levine also paid $260,000 for 7,000 shares, and we see that also validated here on the SEC's website at a price of $36.81. He also says that this was an opportunity to increase my position in DraftKings. Yes, I personally view it as an attractive price, but most importantly, I have enormous trust in Jason and his leadership team to continue to drive performance in the company's core product offerings while building out several exciting new organic growth opportunities. All of these things are great, but let's look at the PE ratio for DraftKings, right? We see that DraftKings is currently trading at a negative nine and a half times forward PE ratio. What does this mean? Well, it means that the company is reporting negative earnings, right? We do have negative 1.5 billion in earnings projected, and we do see that subsequently, this is kind of projected to go down over time, and the analysts are projecting that DraftKings is gonna be profitable in 2025, giving it a much higher PE ratio. Now, of course, we do understand that even though we do have negative earnings, many investors are pricing in growth for DraftKings. But one competitor of DraftKings, Penn National Gaming, is already profitable and is trading in an 18.3 forward PE ratio. So keep that in mind. Penn National Gaming is currently trading at a much lower market cap as well. As you guys can see here on Yahoo Finance, DraftKings is trading at a 13.7 billion market cap with less earnings. But Penn National Gaming does have positive earnings and they're trading at an $8.42 billion market cap. Now, if we just take a look in the difference of market cap and we divide DraftKings market cap by the current market cap of Penn National Gaming, we do see that DraftKings market cap is 61% higher than Penn National Gaming's market cap. What I want to point out again is that, of course, many investors do think that DraftKings is going to be a huge growth story heading into the next few years, so they are pressing that as well, and they also do think that DraftKings can expand into international markets. I understand that DraftKings has potential more growth than Penn National Gaming. But we also have to take a conservative approach when looking at these fundamental analytics and understand why DraftKings has been dropping immensely over the last few months, over this last year really, and why that price at around $65 wasn't justified by its fundamentals. But now let's get into the technical analysis to see where DraftKings can be a potential value when looking at the price action of its chart. So we do know that the insiders did buy recently at these levels, but it has trended lower. Let's say from the highest price that insiders bought, around that $39 mark, we have dropped another 14%. So what are we looking at, right? Well, on the daily chart, we do see that DraftKings was establishing this trading range, right? 
where if you guys remember back in August of 2020, I was saying that this was a potential nice buy because we do have an ascending triangle formation and we saw that, but we did start bouncing in this area, creating this region around the $40 mark, $39 mark, all the way up to the $42 mark as a potential support level. And you guys see, we just broke that and we have been capitulating ever since, right? Ever since really this earnings date, this has been kind of a negative catalyst, sending the stock down much more from around the $48 mark. So right now we are trading in a different trading range that we were trading in back in the summer of 2020. So what can potentially happen now? Well, DraftKings hasn't really shown a potential area where it can get supported yet, right? We are trading in the mid-range of this region, but potentially what we can see is a continuation pattern downwards into this support region, which was the previous level where we did get slightly rejected, got rejected by the top of this region, and we started trading sideways for quite a considerable amount of time. So this really is kind of the low point of the range. This is a relatively big range that we are looking at right now. This is around the 10% drop. But again, remember guys, I always tell you guys to trade with smaller position sizes so you can manage your risk better. So looking at these levels right now, we do note that this flagpole extrapolation was taken from this recent move over here, where we did trade from the $63 mark all the way to the $47 region. We consolidated a bit, but ever since this consolidation breakdown, we do see that we're trending much lower. The flagpole extrapolation says that we might see a price of around $32.87, but again, we might see a much lower price now that many investors are kind of heading out of these growth stocks and speculative plays, and we're seeing a lot of bleeding in these similar companies as well. Many companies that were extremely high growth stocks heading into 2021 have I've seen huge capitulations downward and it's the same thing we're seeing for DraftKings. So again, this region does seem like a very decent area to start laddering in some buys for DraftKings. Let's head into the weekly chart just to get a clearer picture and see where it can potentially bounce from. Now again, on the weekly chart, if we were looking at this chart earlier, we do note that DraftKings did have a bearish head and shoulders and once we broke this neckline of the head and shoulders pattern, which we do know is bearish, we have been capitulating downwards ever since. This was an area where DraftKings did consolidate before trending higher and got supported several times on these weeks over here in August of 2020. So I would look at this area as a place where investors might start laddering in buys right now. If we do start breaking under this area, guys, we can see a capitulation back to this consolidation region, which was the previous high over here before we ended up breaking out and we consolidated a bit on this week. So it would be a pretty immense drop down to the $17 mark. And you guys can see this because again, we don't really have a clear trading range established in this region. We are also trading around the 618 level from the Fibonacci sequence as well well whereas you guys can see if we take this downside target of 1055 all the way to the height of this move at around the $74 mark, the 618 level is currently aligning with the price that we're trading in right now. The price can get supported here, guys, but we are looking more bearish currently on DraftKings chart. We are seeing a slow bleed out right now on the stock, but if we we're going to take a trade in this region, we can potentially risk around 10% on our trade, later in some buys, we can trade back to the top of this region, which would be a 2.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. You guys always know I like to talk about the highest reward to risk ratio plays and two and a half to one is very good when looking at this market right now understand that under current market conditions now that we're having a lot of pressure from the fed potentially raising interest rates heading into 2022 a lot of these stocks can bleed out much further but right now the technicals are saying that if we do trend into this region it can potentially be a good area to buy and have the price rebound back into the 20 and 50 exponential weekly moving averages where we can take some profits at these levels. So guys, let me know in the comment section if you're buying DraftKings stock right now, and drop a like and subscribe for more stock market videos. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great one.